should have written out what I was gonna say. Hi, I'm Rosie Alexander, um, also known as Rosie Law online, if you're nasty. Um, <laughs> which ironically goes hand in hand with the type of work I do, which is a major focus on eroticism and erotica. I've got a big belief in the idea that, you know, sensuality and sexuality shouldn't be taboo, especially when it comes to illustration and art. We see it through hundreds of years <laughs> um, in the biggest paintings that we love uh, to present day. Um, but we have this idea that as soon as it's eroticized or um, not seemly, suddenly it is obscene. And I like the idea of making these taboo subjects so much more accessible and much more of a conversation. So as soon as you start talking about something and open up to the things that you enjoy and you like, then that taboo is no longer a taboo and there's no issues with it anymore. Um, so yeah, as an illustrator, I've had quite a journey from doing a lot of comic work when I was younger, um, and I'm still doing comic work now, hurrah! I'm working on a new project with Nick Bryan, which is going to be really cool, and going to um, bring in a lot of the newer work that I'm doing now, which obviously is very erotic um, and more mature, which I love. Um, but yeah, I'm a digital artist. I mainly work on Procreate because I was converted and Procreate is a f***ing awesome program. <laughs> uh, so obviously I work on an iPad Pro most of the time, mostly working from the, the bed there, as you do. Uh, and I do, I have the terrible habit of watching films as I work too because I like that disassociation between what I'm making and then uh, what I'm watching, um, and it's kind of a very cathartic thing, and I like spontaneity within my work, I think. So I like looking down on the page and discovering I've created something, uh, and it's a good journey, I think. It's enjoyable for me. I also work on a Cintiq, uh, a Wacom Cintiq, which is pretty fun. I often will edit things within Photoshop afterwards to bring colours together um, or brighten things up, especially within photography as well. But yeah, my journey has been an interesting one within my work, but it's only really been in the last year or two that I've really found my niche um, of the sensuality, I suppose. Um, and of course I work on a really awesome podcast called Drunk Art Review. <laughs> you can listen to me and my friend uh, Jennifer Kemp talk about nonsense um, and art and mispronounce things all the time. <laughs> Terrible at that. Um, give me a word and see how I butcher it. That's the, that's the main thing, isn't it? Uh, but yeah, we've been doing that for about two years and it's great fun and it's a shame with the corona hitting because we would have loved to actually start up having meets, like face-to-face -face meets. Um, so hopefully in the future we'll be able to do that and then you'll be able to talk to us, we'll have a drink, it'll be fun. Who doesn't like talking about art over an alcoholic beverage? Um, but the thing with Drunk Art Review is that you don't have to <laughs> be an alcoholic to enjoy it. <laughs> It's basically the idea that anyone from teetotal to blind ass drunk can give their honest opinions on all forms of art. And we love that. Because art is for everyone and it's in everything. Everyone watching this video will know that. Another really exciting thing is that I'm working on a new podcast called Pretty Kinky. <laughs> As you can tell, probably with the work that I make, um, it's going to be erotic stories uh, and erotic poems and sensual stories and submissions that are coming in from all over the world. So if you want to submit a story to me and have me read it out with wonderful music and all sorts, then just send it, DM me, send it over in my email, because that would be great. Um, but I'm hoping to launch that pretty soon, I just need to get the design down. Um, but what I love most, I suppose, within my own work is the freedom I've found 
um, of being able to walk over different lines that we, as a society, put down in the ground. <laughs> it's like, don't walk over here. That's not seemly. Um, that's only meant for the bedroom or that's not meant to be spoken about in day-to-day -day life when in actual fact I think that you know we're humans we're mammals and yeah as soon as you start talking about something it makes it accessible and understandable and when you learn more you can develop it more and enjoy it more I suppose um, but yeah I work with pretty vibrant colours, I often call it a neon gush, um, <laughs> and I, it, well, other, other artists might call it a, yeah, other artists might call it a, a colour vomit, but neon gush is the word I use, <laughs> um, and it's been an amazing thing to see the connection and the response that I've had with people discovering my work, especially them being able to see the very uh, family-friendly cartoons that I used to draw and have that develop over time to now. Because, I mean, we always have these journeys and to stick with those people and actually like see them getting from here to here. Um, it's really wonderful as the artist to know that you guys are still on that journey with me. Um, and I've had people say how lovely and open um, they've found my work and, and me, which is really a, a, such the nicest compliment. And I want to keep sharing that openness because, it, you know, if I'm, well, with me and my work, if I'm not giving everything, like, of that persona, then I'm doing a disservice to people knowing who I am, I suppose. And, I mean, we're all the, the centre of our own worlds, and might as well be you. <laughs> but yeah, I've loved people who have, have messaged me saying that they're not necessarily into this erotica or this smut, but they've found that... Uh, They've really enjoyed my work because it has a sensitivity to it and an enjoyment and a, and a fun aspect. It's not, um, it's not grutty. <laughs> it's enjoyable. Um, so that's been a huge compliment. And I, I can't wait to see where it develops from here. I find so much of my inspiration from Instagram, from the internet. Um, but I'm hoping to move that forward with taking my own reference images. Um, I love the intimacies between people and human interactions, so I'd love to take my own references for that. So, that should be fun! <laughs> I've really enjoyed showing you a little bit and talking to you a little bit um, about the kind of work I do. Hopefully you haven't found it too smutty, <laughs> because that's never the goal. It's just about openness and loveliness and human instinct, I think. But yeah, I hope you like my work, and you can always find me on any of the social, you know, social outlets, outlets? <laughs> um, on Instagram mainly, that's my babe. Uh, but yeah, I really enjoyed giving you a little tour around here. <laughs> um, thank you, Blog with Lola. Uh, I've loved collaborating with you and to see all the other artists that have been shown this month, so cool. Because that's what Instagram's for, it's about connecting with other people. And that's what art's about for me, so yeah! Thank you, I'll see you later.